This could possibly be the best bass lake in the world right now. Lake Bacharach, Mexico. And we're talking lots of fish of this size and a lot bigger. It's going to be a great show. Glad you could join us. Coming up. Lake Bacharach, Mexico is considered by many to be the best lake in the world for both numbers and size of bass. Catching several fish a day over seven pounds is common. So when the folks from Shimano, Canada invited Bob and Wayne for three days of fishing on Lake Bacharach, they gladly tagged along. And as you'll see on today's show, they had no regrets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hog heaven. <laughs> Here comes. Whoa! All right. Whoa! Oh man! <laughs> Whoa! Oh yeah! Oh, yeah. All right! Whoa. Look at that big lighter! Yeah! That thing is a monster! Oh man! <laughs> the real fishing show with Bob Izumi. Oh yeah! All right! The real fishing show. <laughs> Oh, that's new! <laughs> nice one! Oh, man! Help! Oh, man! All right! All right! Oh, man! Oh, man! Woo-hoo! Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, an absolute monster smallmouth. Look at that. Whoa! Real fishing is sponsored by Chevrolet. Mercury, number one on the water, and Tim Hortons. Now that's what I call a real fisher. I was recently invited to join the guys from Shimano and a bunch of their independent retailers for a trip to Mexico. Once the plane landed, we boarded the bus for the scenic ride to the lodge. We arrived at the lodge just as the sun was setting and headed to bed so we could get up early the next day and start fishing. Whoa, that's a good fish there. Really? Yeah. Wow. Was that a second cast? I got a king shot, Wayne. One of the straight king yeah. shots. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. That's a good way to start a Mexican trip. Whoa. <laughs> what a good way to start. Nice fish. All righty. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Unbelievable. I haven't even... I was just taking off my uh, uh, real cup. Yes, sir. Real Thank cup. You. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Let me get a picture of that, Bob. Oh, oh i got to start this. Look at this. This is, a, this is a swim bait from Strike King. And it's called a, a king shad. Boy, they fight hard, Wayne. Unbelievable. And this bait here, I mean, Kevin Van Dam swears by this bait. Look at that. That's a fatty. Let's see. Let's see that bait, too. All right. Nice. Okay. And the weight. Will it make five? Five pounds. One ounce. All right. Okay. Good stuff. Yeah. All righty. Nice start. Thank you. Good start. What's he doing? He's fishing in front of me. He's getting aggressive, folks. He picked my spot up there. the action on this bait here. This is a, another Strike King swim bait. It's called a King Kong. All right. <laughs> okay, now you've got a big wide gap weighted hook on that uh, yeah. Berkeley swim bait. They're the hollow belly, but you also put a treble on. Because yeah, well, they include that right in the package. Actually, there's a lot of hardware in there. There he is. Boy, they fight hard. Uh, what, they got smallmouth small genetics there? Oh, boy, he ate that thing. A lot. There you go. Hot bass. Look at that. Talk skinny one tonight. Skinny, but look at Taco eating it the way down there. Eh? Oh, there's some pliers right on top of my uh, Shimano yeah. bag there. I'm going to need them. You know, I 
It's funny, do you do you go for numbers or big fish? And I'm here for a big fish. There's uh, 28 people here, many uh, of the independent retailers from across Canada that are Shimano dealers are here on this trip. Look at that bass. Healthy? <laughs> and this is... he, he curled curled that hollow belly up. <laughs> oh, that bait. I love that bait. That is... Oh, there we go. Good one? No, I don't know. I don't think so, but it hit that great big bait. <laughs> well, maybe. Maybe? No, I don't know. Yes, no. Maybe. I don't know. It's staying there. Uh, I don't think so. No. It's got an attitude, though. Don't they fight? That's a heavy action rod. Oh, that's a nice <laughs> one. <laughs> Look at it. Here, let's see. Yeah, we got out of the way here. Yeah, that's a good bass. Look at this bait in his mouth, too. All right. <laughs> Classified it there. He doesn't know what's happening. Big lure, big fish. All right, you're right. <laughs> the guide knows. He's out here all the time. Whew. Hey, Mr. Bass. Look at that. Not your traditional uh, Ontario bass bait, right? Nice one. Yeah, right by that right. tree. going to come up and jump. All righty. Oh, nice one. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh, fat one. All right. I just threw a cast past that, that tree. TV, eh? It's going to be a camera type of day. Oh, yeah. That's what we're talking about. Oh, baby. All righty. Whew. Look at that. See, Bob? Getting bigger. Yeah, that's a good one. Seven, eight pounds? Look at that bait. There, boy. Yeah, let me see. With that son of me, just a beauty shot. <laughs> Take these glasses off. Huge bait, big fish. And the weight. Not as big as no. we thought. Six eleven. Six eleven. Six eleven. Nice. Alrighty. Six pounds eleven ounces. Look at that bass. That water is so warm. <laughs> nice fish. Alright. Good stuff. Hey. Hey, yeah, I'll tell you. This uh Big old King Kong. I'm talking a large version. And you know, Strike King came out with uh, with these swim baits now all oh, for the last two years, and just a cool bait. Hmm. Nice way of breaking this new one in today. Stay tuned to see more monster Mexican largemouth. Oh yeah. <laughs> we are on Lake Bacarac, Mexico which is located east of Los Mochis, Sinaloa, only two hour drive from Los Mochis Airport. And uh, this lake is about 25 years old. This is a man-made lake, and we have 35,000 acres of water. I did part of the uh, stocking of this lake, and we did put in fingerlings brought in from Houston, Texas, and they were pure blood Florida. Then they got mixed with your northern bass, so we got a cross in between the Florida bass and your northern bass. I think that's why this lake is so good because it's a combination of both different species of bass. Most people will catch a nine pounder, that's common. And now the tens are coming easy. So I figure next year the levels are gonna be coming like the tens are doing this year. This is, with no doubt, the best lake in Mexico and perhaps of the world. Yeah, Justin Party's got a giant. Yeah. See, he just caught he just caught a ten and a half earlier. Nice bass. Is that Mike Jackson from Fishing World there. Oh, net out over here too, Bob, on the other side. It's a very social fishing place. <laughs> Next time we should just bring a big barge. This is a better one. Here's my double header. Double header. Okay. Ah. 
I love Lionel. You got a good one? They love the swim bait. Man, oh man. Come on, baby, where are you? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> He's got himself a horse on there. <laughs> Let me get this one in, Wayne, real quick. Get her out of the way. <laughs> He's got a horse. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. <laughs> yeah. uh, you want me to grab him, Wayne? Whoa, look at him pull the drag, yeah? Oh, I drag. can get him. You can get him, Wayne? Uh, got me to my knees. Good, good oh, you got that great big saltwater bait on. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Get that hand in there. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. Hog heaven. <laughs> Look at that. He ate that power bait. Salt. Hog heaven. Let me get Look at that. A big power mullet. That is a horse. Here, take those glasses off. I'll get the other camera, too. Okay. Ready? Yeah, yeah. baby. Okay, here we go. Eight, eight, 14, or 13, 14, eight, 13. Okay, we'll call it 814. Alrighty. Coming down, going back in. Alrighty, Look nice how awesome. broad that is. Skinny, underprivileged. You should take a lesson from that bass bomb and go to the same fitness center. Here he comes. He's going to get that. Uh, he's thinking. He doesn't want to stand there. It's a little too deep. He doesn't want to leave. He doesn't want to leave. He says, what am I going to do? Wow, Bob, look at this. Well, there's a dead bass, Wayne, that yeah. obviously bit the dust. Wow, what's it got in it? Here, hold that. Joe. Big tilapia stuck in its mouth there. Tilapia? Yeah. Tilapia. Have you ever had that problem, Bob? Well, it's yeah, actually... In, you like tilapia too, right? In in Mexico and Cuba, we've seen this. They get a big tilapia wedged into their mouth there, and they can't swallow it, and they, they end up uh, choking themselves. And Pretty common. I like eating tilapia, actually. I buy them all the time at the fish market. Want two? Okay. Look at that. That's the bait right there. Actually, that can be still edible, eh? It's still alive. Put still alive. Back. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Put... The tilapia is still alive, and the bass is dead. Put it back in the water, see. You think so? Unbelievable. Yeah, oh, yeah. Look at that swim. Unbelievable. Too bad. We should have had the bass swim. The bass should have swam. Yeah. The tilapia could have kicked the bucket. Unbelievable. But, dude, there's no justice out there. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, folks. Welcome to Mexico. There are more huge bass on Lake Bacharach when we return. Look at that horse! Let's take a look down under with this week's Fish Eye View. Sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water. The biggest problem facing any visiting angler is locating fish on unfamiliar waters. If time is of the essence, it's best to go with obvious nearshore structure. On featureless lakes, any wood, rock, or weed can hold fish. If the whole place is a weed bed, look for open pockets, however small. On shorelines littered with timber, try the more recently fallen ones. If you're in a real pinch, you simply can't beat man-made structure. We don't have to tell you that docks attract fish. They're a true classic. The low-lying variety is best and can draw any species of fish in the lake. A great way to explore these is with surface lures or crankbaits. The residents will usually make a showing even if you don't connect. Then, follow up immediately with a finesse bait. Boathouses, cribs, and break walls also hold fish. Indeed, anything that provides cover or casts a shadow has value. And do factor in the direction of that shade before proceeding. Often overlooked, anchored boats add to a good thing. It's best to cast alongside than directly at, especially if it's not your boat. Common sense and etiquette are paramount when fishing privately owned structures. Marinas have the greatest potential of all, if in fact you can obtain permission to fish. It's amazing to see anglers rushing to get out on the lake, not realizing what lurks just below their feet. 
We had a hearty lunch with all the guys at the lodge, and after a quick siesta, we loaded up and headed out again. But I think that my brother Wayne was starting to feel the effects of that hot Mexican sun. Whoa, baby! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> That's holding that seven. Seven pounder! Sort of a European flavor. Oh, that's nice. You know, one of the keys around fishing wood like this, especially when the sun's up, mile high skies, is to get a worm or a jig vertically down near the base of them. And too many people don't put an uh, importance on the accuracy of your cast. Plus, you have to strip the line, let it sink down against the base in case these are pretty good. Instead of swinging away, like right. you know, for instance, if I cast out, if I cast cast out uh, here, for instance, and just tighten my line like this, the bait's swinging towards me. But if I cast out and then lower my rod tip, what I can do is get that bait to sink vertically right down along the, uh, the or tree. Or even strip line, right, Buff? Or strip line, yeah. yeah. A lot of times you might think I'm picking a backlash in my cast, but I might be doing this just to get that line to sink straight down. <laughs> Did you see that? Oh! <laughs> Did you see that? I had wow. A, had a hook on a tree, pop it off twice, did he come up and he came right up. And that's a big fish. <laughs> Good fish. All right. And grabbed it. Oh, that's a big fish. You need help? Uh, oh, man, look at that Kumara rod doubled over. <laughs> that How is come a, they fight so strong Oh, here? look at that. The jumbo, man. I mean, it's a go. Oh. Come on. Come on. All right. Oh. Look at that horse. That's a two-hander. <laughs> and look at that saltwater bait. All righty. So what is that? A big <laughs> Berkeley power bait mullet. So yeah, saltwater mullet. And wow, that's good when you reach your hand right in there. Oh, you can get it. And attract it. Just don't on the top of the. There you go. Out it comes. Woohoo! Hold that bait for a second. I think right. both. Jeez. Oh, there yeah. we go. Try again. There we go. Yep. Okay, ready? Seven, five. Seven, five, and right down to three eighths. Seven, five, and three eighths. But a healthy looking specimen, eh? Just a beaut. Does he get bigger? Hard to believe. That's a huge. Oh, wow. He just clamped down my hand. You wouldn't believe? Look at That's that. big bass. All righty. Big bass. Woohoo! You know, just another day at Lake Backrack. What a great place. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with some more of this real Mexican bass fishing after this. Don't go anywhere because there's still more big Backrack bass wow. coming up. All righty. This tip of the week is sponsored by Coleman. Fishing Texas rig worms have been around for, for as long as I can remember. You know what? When you're fishing around cover, in the case of today, there's a lot of flooded trees and rocks down there. I like to use a straight shank hook. This is an extra stop, strong straight shank, four-odd hook. This is a sliding worm sinker. And as you can see, this has got a little screw-in weight here. Um, and you screw that into the head of your worm. Now, this is not a plastic worm. This is actually uh, from Berkeley. It's a gulp worm. It's biodegradable. It's a 10 inch. And what we like to do is just take the point of the hook, thread it through, bring it out maybe three quarters of an inch, hide your line tie, line up the hook like so, so it's straight, bury the worm. These are very soft, easy to get a hook into the fish, and then just screw the weight into the worm head. Then you've got a snagless, weedless Texas rig type bait here. And I'm using 20 pound uh, trilene fluorocarbon on a crucial, medium heavy, seven foot six uh, rod. This is a bait cast reel. Here's a Cronark reel. Got it spooled up with the 20 trilene fluorocarbon. And this is a really a pitching or flipping rod, but also a great worm rod. And, you know, one of the keys in, in fishing a worm is a fairly stout or a stiff action rod. And 
you're in business. Tap that, eh? The sun is going down over the mountain. It should go by. Steady all day. Steady all day. Probably, a, I'd say, a hundred fish close to it. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. My thumb's sore. Your thumb is sore, your feet got sunburned, you're wearing the nice socks. It's been a heck of a day. How much leg should you show in a good tournament? Well, an inch, inch and three quarters, maybe? I don't know, but you're scaring me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good, huh? Yeah, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Getting dark, Bob. Oh, Getting yeah. Dark. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You could just tell the way they hit. I put on a 10-inch power worm because I was, I'm running out of the gulp. And look at that. That's a nice bass. Whoa, baby. Beauty. That's not the way they normally land them, folks. <laughs> but a real yeah. fishing show, he makes it a possibility. <laughs> All right. This place is absolutely amazing. We're talking about Lake Bacharach, Mexico. Absolutely a trip of a lifetime, folks. See you next week. Woo! Yeah, all right! <laughs> this is a big fish. That is a fish of a lifetime. <laughs> well, that is just amazing. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah! Wow. <laughs> That was too cool. Oh man, what a fish. Look at that. <laughs>